And tonight, there is breaking news from the campaign trail as there is new evidence linking the Obama campaign with the controversial pro-Obama super PAC known as Priorities USA. Now, this evidence appears to indicate that campaign officials closely coordinated with PAC organizers on the ad released yesterday that blames Mitt Romney for the cancer death of a steel worker's wife. Now, such coordination would be a blatant and very serious violation of federal election law. Now, in a moment, attorney and author and columnist Ann Cole will react but first let's take a look at how we got to this point we begin by taking a brief look at the super PAC ad that features a man who claims that governor Romney and Bain Capital are responsible for his wife's death and and then one day she she uh, became ill and then I took her up to the Jackson County Hospital and, and, and admitted her for pneumonia and that's when they found the cancer and by then it was stage four it was it was there was nothing they could do for her and she passed away in 22 days. I do not think Mitt Romney realizes what he's done to anyone. And I, furthermore, I do not think Mitt Romney is concerned. Now today, the president, White House aides, and campaign officials have all refused to condemn that ad. In fact, Press Secretary Jay Carney, campaign advisor Robert Gibbs, and deputy campaign manager Stephanie Cutter are among the many Obama confidants who have said they simply cannot comment on this because they are not familiar with this man's story. Now they have also attempted to distance the White House and the campaign from the super PAC by reminding reporters they're legally not permitted to coordinate with such organizations. But there are a few problems with with this defense. Number one, the very same steelworker that starred in the official Obama campaign ad that was released in May. See if you recognize this man. I was devastated. It makes me angry. Those guys were all rich. They all have more money than they'll ever spend. Yet they didn't have the money to take care of the very people that made the money for them. Now, even after being featured in that video, the campaign wants you to believe it doesn't know anything about this man. Now, here's what Stephanie Cutter said this morning. We uh, don't have anything to do with Priorities USA, uh, that by law we're not allowed to coordinate with them, and by law we don't have anything to do with their ads. I don't know the facts of when Joe Soptic's wife got sick or when she died, but as I said before, I do know the facts of what Mitt Romney did with GS Steel. I do know the facts of how Joe Soptic lost his job, lost his health care, the entire company went bankrupt. Don't know the facts, Stephanie. Sorry to report, but we have uncovered some audio that punches, well, a few holes in your story. Namely, the fact that you hosted a conference call during which Joe Soptic explained the details about his wife's death. Listen to this. A little while later, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. I had to put her in a county hospital because she didn't have health care. And when the cancer took her away, all I got was an enormous bill. When you look at what Mitt Romney did at places like GST Steel, you can tell he's only worried about one group of people, and that's the people like him, people at the top. You can't expect much, much more from someone who says he likes to fire people with no concern about what their family really means. Now I'll turn the call back over to Stephanie. Great. Thank you, Joe. We really appreciate you and David sharing your experiences. I guess Stephanie does know his story. Now, beyond not having the moral courage to come out and condemn that ad that accuses Mitt Romney of murder, now the conference call audio you just heard and the ad that you just saw are two critical pieces of evidence that suggest that the Obama campaign is, in fact, in close coordination with the super PAC. And if federal election laws are being broken, we, the people, we deserve to know.